255 here. What up? What up? Today we're reviewing Tales of Arise number one. I'm going to be rating seven different areas. I'm going to go through each category. It does have one redeeming quality. And let me start with that instead, okay? Um, the number one redeeming quality about Tales of Arise is the combat. If there was a reward for JRPG combat of the year, Tales of Arise gets it. It reminded me of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. There's always something to do. You got an assist literally popping up. Your characters got their own like level one super that they can do from time to time. And that's some of the stuff that I loved about this game was the combat was always entertaining. It was simple, but you can get deep with it. The arts, the different supers that they did was beautifully put together. And I would say that the, the battle system is the best. And it's simple to understand, simple to upgrade your weapons. I love the content there. And so if they spent a lot of time working on the combat, congratulations. Different ways you can call in your characters who are in the background and still pull them into the battle. That was pretty original and I love that. So the next section would be graphics. Were the graphics great for the Tales series? Absolutely. But that's the problem. It's great for the Tales series. Overall, it wasn't knocking down the walls. It's not that memorable. It's great anime effect, but in terms of it being this breathtaking experience in this linear world that was originally marketed as an open world, the content didn't grab me. And look, I said these things before the game come out. It's gonna be a link right here. Okay, I, I made a whole video about five things I wanted from the next Tales of Arise game. And one of my complaints is that it didn't do that. So the graphics were great for a Tales game. Okay, and it's on a PlayStation 5. So of course it's gonna be better than the other. It has to be. But in terms of revolutionizing um, the Tales series, okay, in the area of combat, there was a step up. In the area game mechanics is a step up. In the area of graphics, there's a step up. But this being the next great leap in the Tales series, as I'm seeing from so many reviewers, absolutely not. The music was not memorable, period. I mean, what else do you want me to say? Do you have a favorite track from there? Is, is, is the Tales music series track going to, not that Tales game has legendary music, but this was just extremely mundane. Maybe one or two songs, but nothing like the JRPGs of the past. And that was one of the things I mentioned. All right, now for the big things that really drove me crazy. Villains. Like, Honestly, what what was this nonsense with these villains? These random eyed monsters that your party has no emotional attachment to or resentment toward other than them just being some obstacle, like, uh, I don't know, like a, a, a car accident that happened on your way to school so you have to walk around the block. You don't really care about it. It's sad that it's happened. Oh, it's here, I have to deal with it. But that's what the monsters in this game felt like, car accidents. I don't understand why we could not get villains that were more emotionally connected. I think the biggest problem with villains was that their villains did not have any character development. Okay, we only have to look at Juju Kaisen for an example of villain character development. Or even One Piece. Or even Final Fantasy VII. Or any game with good villains. Villains need character development. They don't have to have character development. But then there has to be something imposing about them. There has to be something that changes the scenery that does something how is your final boss the great spirit this this beat this villain was intelligent enough okay 
This villain was intelligent enough to manipulate an entire race into controlling another race. And, and but it couldn't talk to you when it came time for the final battle. There was no conversation. And during the later part of the game, you start to get excited about the villain because all this mystery behind him. Who's the true ruler, the true sovereign of Reina? And it's this non-talking, whale-looking Final Fantasy VII whale creature sin thing that no one asks for. That is my biggest problem with these villains. These villains don't have any character. Okay, so we had the, the five lords. Don't get me started on them. There was decent attempts made there to make them villainous and interesting, and I appreciated that. It wasn't great, it wasn't anything spectacular, it wasn't anything I haven't seen before, but the effort was there. But the final boss being the most boring one, with randomized monsters that came from it, the villains were absolutely horrible, and, and this is what made the game bad. There were some twists and turns, sure, but uh, overall, no. As far as the world building is concerned, there is no reason to be connected to the world. What did the world really do? What what was special about Tales of Arise World? We have the normal areas that you have in other, every other JRPG, but there was nothing original about it like in Tales of Vesperia. There was nothing that would connect you to it. They were there, they existed. And when I was done with those areas, I just wanted to leave them. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go too much in depth, but for an example, look at the first area. When you left that slave camp, was there, did you really ever want to return to it? Was there anything about it that caught your attention? But you had to. And that was another garbage mechanic that I didn't care for. Going back to these other areas, fast traveling for no reason. Then there was the following area. I don't remember the name of it. It's just that dull to be honest with you didn't do anything it just there was nothing that would attach you to it so that was the problem there was no outside of upgrades and level ups and experience and side missions there was nothing about the areas themselves that grabbed me started from the first area in the game and another sidebar which is really not a sidebar how expansive is your game if by the time I get to the second or third area, I'm already fast traveling back to where I started. In Final Fantasy VII, when you started in Midgar, you didn't go back to Midgar until you got to the second or third CD. So the game was looked at as this big, expansive world. It's supposed to be revolutionary. It's evolving the Tales series, but it's still going back to things like fast travel on a PlayStation 5 size game where you, you, you can't build a world or think of content to, to take us to other place that we gotta still go back that sounds like a lack of content that's a big difference for something like Final Fantasy 7 when Midgar became like this legendary thing where when you made the remake you could just make it on that is that a fair comparison absolutely I hated the slave camp area there was nothing about it wanted me to return I loved Midgar even 20 years later after the game was being made into a remake Story. <sighs> you know, all right, let me not be completely vile about the story. If this is your first time playing a JRPG, I think that Tales of Arise does a great job. If you're a long time series of JRPGs, Tales of Arise story does an average job. If you're just a Tales fan, well then you got what you would have expected from any average Tales game. Uh, this coming from someone who loves the Tales series. The problem was not, in terms of originality, it had some toward the end. This idea of the Rainins actually being spawned originally from the Donnas that was original. 
the mystery built around the sovereign that was also okay so that that for me was the highlight of the story outside of that everything was pretty generic and there are interesting ways to do revenge plots and rising up from oppression and fighting they didn't do that here at all and then they and 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 part of the problem was as i said before the villains even if they made the greatest story in the world it could not survive with these terrible villains that nobody cared about to a certain extent but there was nothing original alfin got the girl at the end the rest of the story up to there was okay here's a plot point that pissed me off right one of the main plot points that pissed me off was uh this idea that alpha was this 300 year old human he's this 300 year old human being but when he gets his memory back after whatever the case is he existed since that time there's nothing special about him his memory comes back and nothing really changes about him there's not all of this ancient knowledge restored to this 300 year old being and then there's laws retarded nonsense where Law gets revenge for his dad, but he wants to stop. Uh, I don't remember this freaking character's uh, name. I think it's Remlin, okay? Uh, Gremlin, whatever she was. But she can't get revenge for her parents because somehow it would be wrong because it just feels wrong. It's stupid. It's stupid. I enjoyed that. I did like the idea of them. She uh, wanted to live. That was very human. Bringing, uh, what is his name? Dolem as a part of the uh, character crew. Cool. That could have been a really big surprise, except that they revealed it during the preview. So there was no surprise there. And in fact, they revealed all of the side characters during the preview. So there really weren't much surprises there when those characters joined your party. And there wasn't a lot of other things to supplement that. And that may not be a Tales of Arise thing. That may be just one of the problems of these last, this new generation, I should say, of people producing entertainment where they reveal so much of their product that by the time you watch the product, there really isn't all that much surprises left like in Dragon Ball Z Brawly, Super Saiyan God Vegeta, Diffusion, yeah, you know, they, they Gave you every surprise possible, but that's Dragon Ball Z. It works because we watch Dragon Ball Z for fighting, not for uh, story elements. But in a JRPG where the story is the main thing, it was a problem. I really could say more, but just yeah. And uh, finally, we have the uh, characters. Alfin was your he. He had a chance to be something good he just wasn't he's not even good at being a, a flat line character who makes all these changes on the people around him he really doesn't change a lot of the people around him. like the, the his companions that join him sure they have some uh character development in terms of changing uh, the villain's minds that didn't happen right he had to kill the first four of them five of them whatever um Xion, i appreciate that Xion was your typical princess damsel in distress harm person and that she so there was some originality there I, i'll give credit to um Xion, but renwell all right yes yeah, she had her real resentment toward the Ren, and she eventually got over it um but there was nothing really you know, whopping you about her character. Law just irritated me from the first time I saw him. Like, he just didn't, there was no more depth to him other than, um, you know, I'm mad at my dad. Oh, I feel bad about what I did to my uh, dad and me helping out the rain in. So now I'm going to join the adventure. That's kind of where his character growth stops. Dohalim. Dohalim. However you say his name is the kiss. He, I guess he was traumatized by killing his friend. I appreciated that 
that he was honest about his reasons for why he wanted to set up the city. They were more selfish than not as divine. There was some character. He, and, and, and truthfully speaking, him and Shion had the most character development. Kisara, besides being nice eye candy, um, she was great in combat. As far as adding unique aspects to the story, besides being Doholim's cheerleader, yeah. We're not talking about the stupid owl. So if I had to give this a score, uh, I'm gonna have to give it a five out of 10. I really could have said a lot more, but for the sake of being brief, I want to leave it at this. You know, leave, tell us in the comic sections what you loved or hated about the game. Let's have a conversation about it. Um, but I, if you if you disagree, let me know in the comment sections. Let me know what your thoughts are. I mean, be prepared to have a conversation about it. But yeah, this is Deep Bond Two Fifty Five out one.